Hey, all you holistic hipsters out there, it's that time. So grab your chalice of choice and sit back and sip along with us. We would love to welcome you to the Tea Podcast, where we spill the tea on all things holistic in the pet grooming industry. Let me introduce you to our hostesses with the mostesses. She is the socialite of skin and coat care, Ms. Michelle Knowles. And the queen bee of all things oily, Ms. Melissa Conti Diener. Brought to you by TheOilyGroomer.com. Are you searching for a new and more mindful way of grooming? Interested in understanding how to grow your grooming business with a more holistic and organic approach? Please contact Melissa Conti Diener at TheOilyGroomer.com so that you can set up a meeting and bring balance and prosperity to your life. And AllThingsPaw.com. Intermediate and advanced courses in pet esthetician work, fear recovery, animal handling, and more. Get your learn on with all things paw. Also, classes with Melissa, online and self-guided, intuitive energy work, transitional therapy, and compassionate touch point therapy, and more. And the Herbal Paw Pet Apothecary. Tailored for the individual pet, phone consultations, history gathering, and the home of the Herbal First Aid Kit. Now, let's get this tea party started. Alrighty then. Oh, Melissa, we woke up again. Yes! (laughs) (laughs) We woke up again. We're on the right side of the dirt. I'm happy to say that every morning that I am uh, upright and able to take a few steps forward is a good day. Right. (laughs) Our smiles are even, not sagging down on one side. We're doing good. (laughs) I am sans any additional hair, sans any additional makeup. Mm -hmm. I am uh, sans one nail down. Um, oh man <laughs> tragedy tragedy the I'm horror actually, i'm actually trying to do this like get back to uh let these kind of grow out and pop yeah. them off and get back to a little bit more natural state here mm-hmm. um, for as long that. as i can stand it right because you got to have your glitter right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no doubt how are you this morning miss michelle i'm a little sleepy yeah, well, sleep. Yeah. I got that menopausal weird sleep pattern going on. Sleep for two minutes, awake for fifteen hours. Okay, that's just how it goes. So <laughs> I woke up at one. I was on the couch because I needed the fan. Oh, and I, I freeze on to death because he's got five blankets on him. <laughs> and he came out like one thirty in the morning. He's like, "Are you coming to bed?" And I did. And then I'm like, "Oh, he woke me up." So yeah. then I was up. <laughs> Yes. My husband knows if I'm sleeping, don't wake me <laughs> <No>. up. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I woke up to the John's alarm and then uh, five Shih Tzu's licking my face. Like, get up, hey. get up wake up. <laughs> if you don't get up, we'll start to eat your lips. <laughs> <laughs> I was fearing for my life. I could have had my face chewed you off. You felt that. I know. <laughs> You're like, <gasps> <laughs> too deep, too deep. <laughs> At any moment, they could have gone feral. And <laughs> true, it's true, it's true. Well, what do you have in your cup, Miss Melissa? Oh, oh, well, yesterday was a day for me. I'm, I'm off on the weekends, and I was supposed to be working on a whole bunch of things. But unfortunately, for those of you that know me, know that I'm a type 2 diabetic and I suffer from kidney issues occasionally when I am not a good girl. And I have to report that I was not a good girl and and drank uh, some Thai tea, uh, Mm. which is with sweetened condensed milk. Oh, no. And I had kidneys are like. 
then I had coffee. And then I also tried these little Asian pancake medallion things stuffed with cheese. Oh my gosh. Um, were they delicious at least though? It was so delicious, but I woke up and my kidneys were like, fuck you, bitch. So, <laughs> you gonna die. <laughs> So uh, unfortunately, I had to bust out the um, the big guns, and I'm doing the kidney and bladder detox. It's an organic one that I get from the New Mexico Tea New Mexico Tea Company. I order it online. At, I'm not paid for this, but I love this company, and I love to order these. Um, they are loose, so you do need to have a little steeper. But this is amazing. Uh, they even give you the um, the bladder flush to do, which is the juice of a lemon and one lime, 24 ounces of distilled water, and then a pinch of even cayenne pepper to do that. And then you're supposed to drink six cups of the kidney and the bladder detox tea each day while you're on the program for mm -hmm. seven days. I cannot stress this enough. My kidneys are like, thank you when I'm done. You can um, feel the health. <laughs> oh my God. They are. Mm. I literally feel the heaviness go away in mm. my lower back, all that. It is such a welcomed relief. It's fantastic. Do they give the, uh, the, yeah, um, I'm going to give you the ingredients. It's amazing. Yeah, give it up. It's juniper berry, gravel root. Orange peel, hydrangea root, marshmallow root, parsley root, peppermint, uva ursi leaf, horsetail, uh, and a goldenrod. And, that sounds legitimate. Oh my God. It yeah. is it's phenomenal. And then after I do this one, I'll wait 30 days. They have a couple of different detoxes, and then I'll do my liver detox. Mm -hmm. Um because that is also something that gets very angry with me when I don't take care of my kidneys and bladder. Um, and that's a really good point you're bringing up too. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they do a cleanse and it's like a general cleanse. Uh, and really that's not how you're supposed to do it. Right. <laughs> you're supposed to start with your colon. Uh, right. And then go to your large and small intestine and then your liver and then your kidneys and pancreas and whatnot. Um, but like Melissa, if you have an actual issue, treat that first, but then also go for the supporting organs. That is such yeah. a great idea. Yes. Yeah. And I know that it just, it just, ha I just have to do it. Otherwise I'm relying on antibiotics and, um, and over the counter meds and mm -hmm. they just will upset my precariously mm -hmm. precious balance. Uh, you have a so delicate hard. balance. Oh, I'm You're a like a feather balanced in the middle of a hurricane <laughs> on the pin of, on the eye of a needle, like, deek. <laughs> the power of femininity. <laughs> so delicate. So delicate. So. <laughs> so show me your cup. And this is a beautiful cup. Uh, Sorry, I have ice in my in my tea. I'm actually I already drank a cup of this hot. Now I'm going throughout the day with it a little cooler because mm -hmm. uh, it's still it's November, but um, <laughs> Arizona doesn't know that. No, so it's still cool. It's but still this, tank tops, yeah. barely dressed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the cup from Aaron. I don't have the crown in here, but oh, it's um, the bee cup. It's my queen bee cup which uh, John and I were talking about uh, the other day because we were talking about bees and how I have such an affinity for bees because my name means literally means bee, honey bee. Mm -hmm. And we found out that there's actually Saint, Saint Melissa. Uh, and we found out that she's the saint of, hold on to your hats, everyone, <laughs> of scabies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Well, I was like, ew. Why do they, why do scabies need a saint? That's what I want to know. What, well, actually she's the saint of like skin issues. So right. she's the saint that would intervene. Honey, 
is a humectant. They put it on the skin. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, the whole thing goes back to honey and honey bees. And yeah, care. honey is antibacterial. Yeah, I mean, honey right. is, a, is a legitimate treatment. You exactly. could smear honey on your wound and put oh, a bandage yeah. over it. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Honey's. The, I used yeah. to make uh, salve with it for my daughter who has, and I get eczema if I'm a bad girl and don't and and eat things I'm not supposed to. Mm -hmm. But um, honey is a beautiful, beautiful treatment as well as just a um amazing humectant to to use for mm -hmm. uh dry skin mm -hmm. so yeah absolutely a, i know a lot of the manufacturing companies the the fanciest expensive ones uh, use mm -hmm. some honey in their formulations as well yeah but even taken internally it's good mm -hmm. for you it's it very is. good for as long as you're getting real honey Mm -hmm. And therein lies the uh, the yeah. conundrum. Because yeah, get a lot local. Of Don't ever just walk into a grocery store and get honey from a grocery store. Go to a um, farmer's market and get yes. your local honey from your aviary or your aviary keepers. Yep. Um, that is the best real honey that you can find. If you're just buying it off the shelf in the grocery store, more than likely, it's half, if not more than half of corn syrup. Right. Um, or a, a lot of other additives as well. So Yeah. And if you can get it raw, all the better. If you can get mm -hmm. it with a honeycomb in it. Mm -hmm. And the propolis. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's so good for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I love to see the little bits of flowers and things in mm -hmm. the top of my teeth. And, and if you have rest. bad allergies, get the local honey from your area where area. you're allergic. Yeah. Then you will start to build your immune system so that those little pollens won't affect you as much. And the, the wax is good for you it's an anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. as well um because it's all made by the bees and by mm -hmm. nature so it's uh it's an amazing amazing wonderful thing to uh to have at our disposal natural mm -hmm. medicine right there what's yes. in your cup i have <laughs> strangely enough <laughs> uh, i have stuff for allergies and i oh, have my right. it's always time for tea oh Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, delicious. <laughs> um, I have Brigham tea, orange peel, clove, mm. and hawthorn. Uh, and those are, uh, those seem to be working for me very well when I wake up and my sinuses are all clogged and I'm just hacking and I'm coughing because I got the drip. <laughs> You know, and it just cleans up all my sinuses. I have one good blow. And then uh, I usually make a whole... Um, French press of tea in the morning that right. I drink my first cup hot and just like you. Yeah. And then I'll drink the rest of it over ice uh, for the rest of the day until it's gone. And then I'll do my orange drink. Right. So, so I usually try to now, especially since I want to do the cleanse, it's, I just keep trying to add water to it, even though it waters it down a little bit. I need that because I have a hard time with retention of mm -hmm. water. I had that gastric sleeve surgery uh mm -hmm. it's going to be six years now in december so mm -hmm. um that while it was a blessing it was also has made things a little bit more difficult um to maintain uh hydration mm -hmm. so um and uh, i'm about to start a regimen with chia seeds Mm -hmm. because they help hold on to hydration and mm -hmm. help uh also help you could try the four nutritive herbs mm -hmm. um that are dandelion burdock what are the other ones dandelion uh, burdock those are the ones i i but the other I ones are hawthorn and um uh what is the other one um i can't think of it i know i can't think of the other two but you i know for marshmallow sure. or no no, not marshmallow. It's dandelion, burdock. Oh, I wish I had that list. I'll Google it really fast. Four new yeah, because there's only four, not only four, but there's the four main ones. No, this isn't it either. Uh, there's, you're not supposed to take herbs every day, every day, every day, like the same thing. Like if you were doing a right. liver detox or if I'm doing a blood cleanse. You know, you only take it for like a week, week on, week off, week on, week off. However, there are four herbs that you can take every day in a tea or a capsule or season your food with it that just provide nutrients. And those you can take every day of the year. And two of them are burdock and dandelion. So, yeah, I, I bet you're wondering what, uh, what our topic is today. Yeah, I would love to know. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
whatever we want. <laughs> oh, well, that's always good because we can just go off on tangents. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. While I Googled that, I found a whole new herb site that I'm like, oh, I need to go oh. back and read this later. This is really good. Do share. <laughs> yeah, it is called hearthsidehealing.com. Hearthsidehealing.com. We'll yeah, have to check it out. Like yeah, this has like a, a full blog of uh, all sorts of recipes, which I'm always down for here. Uh, yeah, this looks really, oh, there's, uh, it talks about how to make your elderberry syrup, which I need to make again this year. I actually made this a couple of years ago. And let me just tell you, elderberry syrup is no joke. No, no, it's not. I did not get the creeping crud when I was taking my elderberry syrup when it was going around at work and everybody was hacking and snotty and, you know, even the dogs were coming in and just being all raspy and <laughs> I was like, holy cow, what Everybody's is getting elderberry syrup. <laughs> So I made the elderberry syrup and I would just take a spoonful of that in the morning. And man, that really helped boost my immune system. And they have a recipe for it on this site. And it's very similar to the one that um, the one that I have. And it's basically cinnamon, cloves, ginger, honey. Again, our friend honey and your uh, elderberries. Mm -hmm. So uh, very, very, um, very good uh, germ fighter mm -hmm. to keep that creeping crud away because mm -hmm. now we're going to start seeing people and i told you i last last time i was uh i've been having a boo radley <laughs> month where i haven't want to i just haven't felt very social mm -hmm. but i feel like i'm starting to kind of come out of that a little bit and um and now we're going to be mixing and holiday shopping and holiday craziness going on. I know. Here we go, right? Here yep. we go into the season of craziness. Yep. So we're And gonna I'll reiterate again, I don't celebrate any of those things. So I stay pretty sane. I mean, <laughs> I and mean I'm, as, I'm as sane as I get. <laughs> I celebrate everything. She does. Yeah. <laughs> A leaf falls. Celebrate! <laughs> Absolutely. If I get celebrated, I will. I'm well, the reason that I don't is because um, I'm one of those people that I'm uh, in for a penny, in for a pound. Oh, and yeah. it's really hard for me to pull back. So I'm thinking, you know, that lady three doors down, I didn't get her anything. And and it got so bad because I'm so obsessive um, that I had to actually stop. Right. I had to actually stop. And all the stress just lifted off. I have so much life now in December. Uh, and before it was just a torment. And I'm like, this is not the spirit of this season. So I just support people who are going through it. You know, I'll bring yeah, tea, well, I'll bake cookies, I'll bring you some breakfast or some lunch or, you know, important. do something like that just to support you through the season because it's hard. <laughs> Well, it shouldn't always be about uh, about a monetary gift. And Amy, make that, make it, make it. Amy's over there saying that she has an elderberry pack to make. And, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, Anata uh, says same Z's to you, Michelle, that she's not a huge celebrator. Yeah, you but, know, I love, I love I the Lord, but I'm not food. participating in this material worldly right. thing. I can't. I just can't. I can't. It tears me down too much. And I don't celebrate any holidays. We don't celebrate yeah. them. We celebrate life every day. Yes. Well, uh, but we don't that. have we don't have any ties to um, the man-made holidays. We we've, we've discussed my obsession with stuff. She so. has to celebrate because it's in her and it has to come out. <laughs> I have to decorate things. I have to make everything pretty. So if it's not, yes. it has to be aesthetically, I'm a true 100% true Taurus. I uh, love beauty of everything. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want everything to look nice and, and feel nice. And um, so um, my husband said to me the other day when we were in Costco and he's like, I said, you go get this on the list. I'm going to go look at the clothes. And he said, okay. And he comes back and he's like, you didn't buy anything. I said, no. And he goes, why not? And I said, I don't know. I didn't like the way it felt. 
And mm-hmm. he goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, I just walked through and just touched everything. Mm-hmm. But that's <laughs> true. That's going to be against your skin. <laughs> yeah. And why wouldn't you? I read an article the other day. That is so weird that you would bring that up. I you know, in the Bible. Where it, too, I slaughtered her name. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I read an article the other day on the, uh, you're going to love this, Melissa, on the vibration of clothing. Oh. I love that. So different materials have a higher vibration than others. Polyester and all the the man-made fabrics have zero vibration. Yeah, that's why. Linen linen has the highest vibration. So does wool. The highest content of of, of, uh, cotton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so linen has the highest vibration uh, and also wool. And... In the Bible, how freakish this is. In the Bible, it tells you not to wear mixed uh, materials, right? And because they can take the linen and the wool together and they right. negate their vibration. Right. What? Yeah. So and, crazy. And the, you know, when they buried Jesus, Joseph of, of Arimathea wrapped, had his body and wrapped his Jesus's body in the finest of linen. linen. <laughs> and he was extremely well, he was a man of wealth and good, you know, uh, um, means basically. He was a very wealthy man, Joseph of Ar- Arimathea. And so uh, he had the means to get the best. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's what they wrapped the body in. So, um, fitting you know as far as for Mm -hmm. what they were going to you know bury Mm -hmm. him in um normally people weren't wrapped that way right um but that's you know that's how they did that and so i always think of that that um you everything that you that you utilize that you bring around yourself Mm -hmm. has a vibration Mm-hmm. or lack thereof or a lack of it yeah or a negative vibration yes. a vibration nonetheless but i mean that's why um when i was little i used to listen to the radio a lot i was a, i loved music i knew all the celebrities birthdays and everything else now i don't know any of them of course <laughs> but uh back in the day i noticed that if i listened to the radio too long i would start to get nauseous and get a headache mm-hmm. Because back in the day, they changed the actual, uh, what is it, the hertz? Yeah, the hertz. Of, yeah. The, of the music. It used to be something that vibrated your body and healed you. They changed it to 440, which is a negative vibration yeah. to your health. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that. We're not going to go off on that tangent. We're, we're going to. No, I just talked <laughs> about binaural beats. I right. I did a thing uh, not too long ago. Um, mm-hmm. That said, what are you listening to? You know, mm-hmm. you should know what the hurts are of what you have going on around mm-hmm. you. And That's why you see all those whole tone musics coming out yes. uh, and the special Solveggiato, yep, you know, Solveggio and, uh, uh, all those Tesla, things. Because well, Tesla, at the end of his life, for the last 10 years of his life, was working on time travel. And right before that, he had made a chair that you sit in and it had, it looked like a big wheelchair, but the wheels were big coils and you literally can use vibration to heal your body. Uh, And that's one of the inventions that have been patented through Tesla. I, I just saw here locally in the East Valley, um, uh, favorite, uh, crystal rock store that I will go to on occasion, Mm -hmm. uh, they just got a singing bowl that you stand in the standing vibrational. Oh, I can't wait to go try it. When and you do, you call me and we'll go together. Oh, I that sounds amazing. I know. I'm <laughs> so excited to do it. I want to go and, and they, you know, you stand in it and they ring it and it, encompasses you that vibration oh yeah you better not leave me out of that oh yeah that sounds fun i know i'm like super excited for that Mm -hmm. and i'm super excited uh that i am uh today after we're done our live i am also uh starting my journey into i told you this that i'm gonna start my journey on the uh the healing circle to learn Mm -hmm. how to facilitate the women's healing circles. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be, um, 
it's a pretty extensive course, so it's not a weekend, but um, it'll probably take me, uh, you know, at least four months to get through all the material and get my certification. But um, mm -hmm. I'm very excited for that. I am too, because I think that what we lack today is the community of women mm -hmm. that we used Absolutely. to have to survive. Uh, yeah. And as we get more technological uh, and we get, you know, more modern, I guess, uh, civilized quote unquote, yeah. um, we become separated because we depend on technology and not each other. And I think uh, re, uh, reestablishing some women's circles is going to be beneficial for everyone because nurturing and love yes. come out of those circles. Yep. Um, yeah, Melissa, perfect for you. It, perfect niche. Um, it's just so been on my needed heart. In the, yeah, it's, it's needed in the world. It's just been something that's been on my heart and I'm, uh, I'm trying to uh, compartmentalize things that I no longer are, need all my energy and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of be like, okay, you can go sit on the shelf for a little while. I need to open up this, you know, this, this little uh, avenue for a while and focus on this. And, um, and, and I get it because like we were talking about how I get, like, I just don't want, and I'm a, fairly social person, mm -hmm. but I struggle with every so often I, I need to retreat. I just posted that too, mm -hmm. that I was like, um, I need to be in the woods away from everyone for a while. You see, guys, that's how Melissa and I click so well. We're like a, a yin and a yang mm -hmm. because I'm just the opposite of that. I need to stay in my house always. And then every right. once in a while, I'm like, Oh, I, I think I'll go to that little get together. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm usually the opposite. She's just the opposite. So when I say, no, I don't think I'll participate, that people are like, what's the matter with you? Right. You're sick. <laughs> Come here, let me feel you. <laughs> what's wrong? So I'm trying to uh, to get back to that, especially now that all the holiday stuff will be coming up. Yeah. So it's, a, it's important and it is important to honor that in yourself. If you mm -hmm. are not a super social person, then that's okay. You mm -hmm. don't have to be social all the time. I know for you and even for me, if I'm in a big social setting, it's a drain, especially mm -hmm. when, you know, people yell at me for no apparent reason, which is a running joke. Every day, every <laughs> day. <laughs> but... It, it's a she, has, she has to go outside with Wonder Woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, but yeah, I, I get that. And you do need to take time to recharge and to just retreat. Um, you know, uh, but as women, and I think that we have a different set of parameters as far as social pressures for us than men. Men have a mm -hmm. whole separate set of pressures and mm -hmm. social and expectations and right, expectations and all that. But as women, um, even if I'm a mother mm -hmm. and I have children and somebody else is, uh, has no children and isn't married, but, um, still feels different pressures that resonate with both of us just as females, that's mm -hmm. a big thing for me. Is Absolutely. To be able to connect that kind of energy and just be seen and heard and be mm -hmm. allowed to, um, be allowed to, to purge without, um, judgment. Mm -hmm. And, and not just purge, ask for that allergy tea recipe, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. ask, you know, my kid won't go to sleep. What am I supposed to do? Things like that. Instead of going to the internet or going to a book, wouldn't it be nice to, to go to your woman's circle elder right. and, and ask her, Hey, you have great wisdom, grandmother, you know, what are your thoughts on this? And then you get to make your decision because you have women who have been through it yep. instead of just automatically going to the internet and going to somebody who sold a lot of books. Maybe they're just personable and don't right. really have a lot to say. And I'm not saying that, but wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it be the best to be able to, to go just say, Hey, Melissa, you know, I know you're going through the same thing I am, but I've got this weird thing that's happening, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. And Melissa, as my woman circle friend, uh, and confidant and, and female companion, 
uh, what do they call it? Uh, Silent Bob and uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, Jay and Silent Bob. You're my Bob. heterosexual life companion. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and it would be, it's so much nicer to ask Melissa, hey, you know what? I've got these oils here and I want to mix them up. And I think that this is the right combination. Right. But I know you have that knowledge. Help me with this. And yeah. maybe she is asking me something else. Maybe her daughter can't talk to her. That's not going to happen. But maybe her daughter can't talk to her, but we're in the same women's circle. So she'll come to me. Right. Once you form that circle of live females, you know, that are in that nurturing spirit that want to gain their nurturing spirit back because a lot of us have lost it. Right. Um, I think that we need to nurture us, our females back into this uh, beautiful place where we're supposed to be. You know, those are the gifts that we have to give to the world. Oh, I, I 100% believe that. Mm -hmm. I just had a, 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 a tea listener ha had reached out and contacted me. Um, uh, she's a groomer. She, uh, Michelle, um, her name is Michelle. She's in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And um, she just needed a sounding board. She just wanted somebody to say, no, you're not crazy. You're on the right path. You're, mm -hmm. you know, you're... Um, you're doing things the way you should be moving forward. And she did not have that. You know, she just right. didn't know who to reach out to. Although she um, follows all the important people. And we, we talked about River Lee, who I absolutely love her message and how she is so phenomenal. She follows Mary. She follows, you know, all of you, Michelle, you know, so, but she actually just took a moment and said, Hey, can we just do a quick call? And I do a 30 minute free consultation. If you're mm -hmm. interested in consulting, or if you're interested in seeing, um, what I offer that way, or you just need a sounding board, I'll do a 30 minute phone call for you, you know, mm -hmm. with you for nothing. And just take that 30 minutes to be like, yep, I think that's great. Or I think that, we need to expand on this and talk a little bit more and let's put a plan together, that kind of stuff, or get your financials right so that you can afford to bring in a coach or a mentor. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But I know I'm not the only one out there that does that. Mm -hmm. So we need to start reaching out. And that's why I want to, to do that sister circle, that women's circle. I want to, mm -hmm. I really, really want to start to bring about that that sisterhood where we feel like there are people that we actually can rely on and you don't have right. to do these things yourself. Right. I yeah. mean, obviously, you don't want to take someone's entire day and you don't want to, you know, uh, encroach upon um, it remaining friendly and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so, but... I need that time to even figure out if I'm the right one to yeah. help you. Right. And I think that we need to be able to reach out to people and, and do that. And, yeah. say, and if you hey, do well, have an experience you know, doing these, or, you know, this herbal thing, what's mm -hmm. your thought, you know, what are your thoughts on this? No, mm -hmm. not, you know, instruct me for six months on this. I right. Just five minutes. Yes. Answer yeah. Or, I just need to know this one thing or this right. couple of things and what's your thought on it. Yeah. yeah. Usually um, if you are a student of mine, you get to call me and email me. Freely. Right. Uh, if you're a client though, I, there were so many consultations that I was doing that I, I finally did monetize it. Um, and I just left it gentle. It's just $30 right. for 30 minutes, but I had to do that or else I'm just sitting at my computer answering questions for, right. for my whole life <laughs> and not paying my rent. So <laughs> Yeah. I, I did. I, so if it's for an outside client, if it's a, a, a product consultation or a skin issue consultation, I will charge. But if you've ever been a student in my life, you can always email me, uh, you know, DM me, whatever. Yeah. And I'm happy so. to do the same. You know, I mm -hmm. tell people if you're thinking about this, then and I do start the clock at, you know, when, when mm -hmm. our conversation starts, I start the clock and I'm I, I will do 30 minutes um, to figure out if. I can even help you mm -hmm. and I'm not going to give you the answers all in a 30 minute phone call. I'm going to say to you, yeah, I think I can work with you and these are my rates and this is, you know, let's put a project together right. or I, don't, I can't help you and you really need to reach out to so-and-so and I think that they're more better equipped to handle those things. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, I think it's important that we actually start to reach out instead of just 
getting all our information straight from TikTok and, you know, like, uh, like little blurbs here and there, even though I put out tons of free information. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I I can't. I think that I think the movement to get back to talking to each other again is so important. Um, And it's not that you can't get an education online or through a video or through this. It it isn't even that. It's the absolute vibration of other females that are cheering you on in your circle and supporting you and being there when things aren't going great and celebrating when things are going great. Uh, It's getting back to that human uh, component. Yes. And I think that is what we all need. We are missing our village. We are missing community. And I think that people who come from the South have huge uh, community family, Uh, whether they love each other or not, they family is very important. Uh, And I, That's the only example that I really have, (laughs) you know, that I've seen with my eyes. Um, But you see these bigger families, they support each other through their whole life. And I think that a lot of us don't have that um, uh, for whatever reason there. I mean, there's a cabillion reasons why you wouldn't have that or couldn't have that. Um, But we're so technologically dependent that we don't depend on each other we don't see the value in each other and really where do you think all those books and videos are coming from from Mm -hmm. people from humans (laughs) I think it's a big part of missing that community that they put themselves out there you know that Mm -hmm. they're actually wanting that my daughter Rita and I have this conversation often Mm -hmm. uh, about community and about um uh, just about women need women and they do. and men need it, men right <laughs> and it should not be a competition and right. it's hard i mean my daughters are in their 30s and um they couldn't be more different than one another mm-hmm. um however they both say the same things you know that they 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 want deeper uh relationship friendships with other women where they don't right. feel like they have to be in competition with them. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it, it's, it's a, it's a supportive thing mm-hmm. that they're looking for. I mean, I'm close with both of my daughters. I mean, so much so that we were actually laughing yesterday because I didn't feel good. And I was curled up in the recliner behind me watching old movies. Um, and I literally was on the phone with my, well, I talked to both of them, but one I was on the phone with and we weren't saying much Mm -hmm. and she would be every so often. She's like laughing. Like she knew the movie I was watching. She'd be laughing. She's like, Oh, I love that part of the movie, blah, blah, blah. It's just that energy that we're, we're together, but we're not together. She's in Mm -hmm. the East coast. I'm all the way out here in Arizona. We miss that. We miss having that closeness. And I think that we see so much on TV, like Real Housewives and where women are very competitive. And well, number one, TV is not real. Right. It's not real. That is not a real life. And if they are living that way in real life, that's no kind of life to live. That's a Hollywood weird life that no one should be living. Yeah. And I think, that we, I think that we need that. Like just you and I, for example, I mean, since we've been doing this, we've obviously talked to each other far more than we usually do, but we could go six months without speaking a word to one another and pick up exactly where we left off. Melissa and I are those friends. Yeah. It does not matter. She understands me. I understand her. And if it three years went by, And then we got together again. It would be like no time, like no time because it doesn't, it doesn't matter how far away she is from me. She's going to be my friend. Even if she goes to Mars, it doesn't matter. And we (laughs) don't agree on everything. It's not Not at all. (laughs) It's not that we are uh, two peas in a pod and we're, you know, just agreeing upon everything. And no, we actually don't agree on a lot of different things. But that doesn't stop us from appreciating each other. 
Right. And I allow for her to be a whole human being separate from me with her own likes and dislikes. And she does the same for me. And, uh, and I think that's how it should be. That's how friendships work. Yes. If, we were just, if we were exactly the same, we would not bring anything to the relationship. No. You know, there wouldn't be any variety, anything to bounce off of. Um, I think it comes down to just allowing people to be who they are and accepting them for who they are. You know, man, woman, everybody, everybody in between on the spectrum. It, it's the same. You know, kindness speaks to kindness. Nurturing speaks to nurturing. Absolutely. Uh, and once the holidays coming up, I mean, you're going to be if you're doing Friendsgiving, regular thanks, family Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. all that, you're going to come in contact with people that you might emotionally struggle with. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of people are strained around the holidays yeah. because they're all caught up in it and it's stressful. And I think that a season of love should not be so stressful. And if you are finding yourself stressed out every year, my recommendation is just pull back a little bit. Right. Pull back a little bit, make a whole big batch of cookies and everybody gets cookies that year and call it a day. Yeah. Like it, it, no one needs, needs the things uh, that you're desperately trying to find for them. Nobody needs that. And if they're upset that they don't get anything but some lovely fresh made cookies from you, then they're not worthy to give a gift to you anyway. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> not that that means anything. <laughs> well, no, it does mean something though, because I think that it means a lot when somebody gets something from you unexpectedly. So yeah. yes, it's nice that um, if you can afford to, to purchase gifts and that kind of stuff, that's wonderful. But I personally find it far more touching that someone made took the time to make something and that doesn't that means even a card like you said they used their precious minutes, minutes right. to make you something that they can never get back right and that mm -hmm. means a lot even a card just a card that you took a moment to write a little note inside and say have a blessed year you know mm -hmm. um and that's it that means more to me than somebody that sends me some big gift that is, um, you know, disposable almost. Mm -hmm. Yes, they took the time to purchase it, but. Mm -hmm. But it's just stuff. It's stuff. Which, it's stuff. Hello, you can see my background. <laughs> I'm a stuff person. I mean, <laughs> yeah, can't, I can't get away from stuff, but yeah. I mean. Uh, I appreciate that so much more. One time at a show, um, I had a beautiful groomer come up to me uh, just to talk to me. And after one of my classes and she was like, uh, she's like, oh, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I appreciate you. Blah, blah, blah. It's just so, so sweet. And she just took my hand and pressed something into my hand and gave me a hug and walked away. She gave me a little, a small piece of tumbled, um, uh, amethyst. Mm -hmm. And later she had emailed me and said, uh, you know, I'm the girl that gave you the amethyst and, um, from my personal collection of yada, yada, that meant so much to me that she felt like I needed that. And there was no big hoopla about it, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so when you give, give graciously, you know, I think that that's something that we need to to understand also. When we're giving of ourselves, we need to be gracious about it and not be like, um, you know, look what I gave. Look what I did. Look, mm -hmm. you know, take the ego out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's important not to be egotistical. Come, sorry, I have a, come out from underneath my desk. <laughs> I don't want to a doggy dilemma yeah, come here because somebody's jealous. Noni is jealous and doesn't want me to hold Juju. Sorry, Juju, you know, girls, hmm. they need a healing women's circle. They do. <laughs> they do. We all do. We do that. Yes, bad. We all do. I am. I am so excited to have you get done and then lay it all out so that we can do it. I, I, yeah. I'm thrilled. Yeah. I'm excited to start. So after this, that's, uh, I have everything ready to go. I've set aside the finances to do it and I'm about to, uh, to just embark on that journey. So I'm, I'm super excited. I told you I got a new journal. I um, know you told me and showed me, oh, uh, we were talking about this right before we went live. Uh, oh, yes, Anita, yes. To be humble and giving. Look at this gorgeous journal. This is a, 
it, it's a. Uh, it's got gold edged leaves. Gold gilded edge leaves, and um, it's a, a date planner, and it comes with a little book that has the law, the secrets to the laws of attraction, and talks about manifestation. And I mean, it's just wonderful. And I just got it off of Amazon. Mm. Um, it's a uh, freedom mastery. But it's a beautiful, hard bound. It's gorgeous looking. Yeah, it's got yeah. the moon. It's yeah, it's got the cycles of the moon on it. And um, oh, hello, White. My cat's over here talking too this morning. I don't know what he's mad about, but um, but I can't wait to start to utilize that. Um, what do you hear, my zoo? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, kitten. Why are you in here hollering at me? He's meowing and my dog's over here growling because there's yeah. a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can't wait to use that to uh, just keep track. It has like progress tracking and all that good stuff. So I can't wait to utilize that um, mm -hmm. while I'm going through that journey of, of learning all this on how to. I hear that. Who is that? That's Tessa. Oh, now she's whining because now she can't hear the cat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's over here. He wants to be. He wants to be loved, and he doesn't always act like, like that. But today, he feels like being friendly. So, no, I, I hope everyone out there takes a chance um, to do something that might be a little bit out of the ordinary. You know. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't pertain to grooming. It doesn't have really anything to do with animal grooming or the pet grooming. Oh, that's not true. Let's tie it back into grooming because we really can. Nurturing. Oh, uh, yeah. Supportive. Giving. Being humble uh, yeah. to the little puppy that is trusting you with everything they have. Um, yeah, that does tie in. Uh, we're all yeah. connected. We're that's all connected true. in the universe. We're all connected. Um, I was at the IACP and somebody said, well, I loved everything you said in your seminar. However, I didn't like it when you called your dogs, your children. And I uh, said, oh, let's discuss that for a moment. Yeah. I'm not the fur. I don't go as far as saying fur baby, uh, but yeah, they I, are my children. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm not mad at it. I just don't simply use that term. But I said, let's talk about it. He's like, well, once you humanize the dog, and I'm like, I'm not humanizing them. I have plants that are my children at home. Yeah. I've got worms in a worm farm that are my worm children. You know, I've got projects that are my children. Uh, I said, we all eat the sun in some form or another. Yeah. We are all connected in that connection. And my caring for these beings makes them my children. Yeah. Uh, and maybe he understood it. Maybe he didn't. And I just basically said, you live in your world. I'll live in mine. Yeah, you know? Right. If you want to tell your dog what to do every second of the day, you go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm so busy trying to tell myself what to do every second of the day. I feel that so hard. <laughs> Get going. Let's do this. Stop playing around. Yeah. Take that out of your mouth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you supposed to be drinking that? No. Always. Um, so, yeah. Oh, God. That's a, that's a toughie for me. So, no, I, I am the same way. I talk to my plants. Um, I, um, I, I have one that has a big furled, like curled leaf that has not opened yet. And I mm -hmm. cannot wait for that to open. I'm, I'm just like, I go over, walk by it. And I'm always like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And let me put you where the sun, that beam of sunlight can come in and hit you. And I can't wait to see what that leaf looks like. And I talk to them, but I talk to my animals like that too. Mm -hmm. And but they're I, alive. They can hear you. They, they commune with you just like. Yes, they do. Anything and else? I watched last night on Netflix. My husband and I watched the first episode of, oh, I can't think of what it's called. It's like life as we know it or, and it talks about how life evolved. Mm -hmm. And watching that was very eye opening about how plants evolved and mm -hmm. how they really, truly are living things that we don't mm -hmm. really give them the credit. They're and alive. Then, yeah. And then and they have a sentience. On top of it, I saw a, a, a video um, a couple days ago of how they hooked up these um, little um, electrodes to a sunflower and it produced the vibration and music 
Mm -hmm. and how they hooked that up to the same thing to a tree and the vibration was different and mm -hmm. the music was different and they let it play for hours upon hours and it was different the whole time like it never repeated itself mm -hmm. and and i was like if people only really knew how connected we are to these things energetically sure. Mm -hmm. And we don't give them any kind of credit. We don't give them any kind of placement, really, in our life. Mm -hmm. They're looked at as just, just a plant. It's just yes. a dog. It's just a, a, a can. It's yep. just a jar. It's just a whatever. Yeah. And to uh, continue on that same theme, um, the, the smell that you smell when grass is freshly cut yes. is them screaming. That beautiful lawn smell that you get when you cut grass. That's actually the pheromones, the uh, chemistry that they exude while they're screaming. Another dude, uh, a scientist, hooked up a plant. Uh, and he was wondering, he hooked a plant up to a lie detector machine. Uh, a polygraph machine. Yeah. And he wanted to see if he could produce brain waves, if you will, you know, right. quote unquote. Uh, any kind of uh, vibration or electricity coming out of the plant, any reaction. And he's like, but I have to do something. And this shows you how connected we are. Uh, and if you don't believe that, you need to start opening up your eyes and really looking at how things work in this world. Uh, he thought, well, I want a big reaction. So maybe I'll set it on fire. Right. He didn't even set it on fire yet. And the plant went nuts because it knew his intention. Oh my God, he's going to burn me. I don't have no legs. I can't get away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So think about that. Also, trees are alive and they do talk to each other through the mycelium under the yeah, ground. Under the ground. It's a beautiful, it's, it's, it's like Avatar. Yeah. It literally is like Avatar. I feel like that was a documentary somehow. I, that's one I of my feel favorite. that in my heart somehow that that was a documentary. I, that's one of that's one of uh, one of my favorite movies, and I I feel like, and I say this often, I feel like everything has a purpose. Everything is here for a purpose, and there I don't believe in mistakes, and I don't believe in in uh, coincidence. Uh, I think that certain things are created uh, to assist other things like mm -hmm. us. So mm -hmm. yes, plants are alive and yes, we eat plants, but it's part of our survival. It's part mm -hmm. of why, you know, what they were created for. Um, well, listen to this though. Them. Yeah. People are like, Oh, don't eat animals or whatever. Well, plants feed us. We breathe out and feed the plants. Right. So they can grow big and strong and then we eat them. It's no different with animals. Now, right. there's various reasons why to be vegan or vegetarian, and that's fine. I'm not knocking anybody for how they eat or whatever. But just looking at the psychologically, you know, not trying to convince anybody of anything, but just looking at it from a scientific objective viewpoint, everything cycles around and eats itself. The plants will eventually eat our carcasses if right. we're buried correctly so that we can touch soil. Um, so we're all a part of the same system. So depending on how your mind says, okay, that's how I'm going to nourish myself. Um, I don't think it's wrong or bad. I think it's wrong or bad if they're treated unethically. Right. Because if we were, just remember when we were talking about water, you can affect people's water. If you treat something bad, let's say you have a chicken and you have a cucumber plant and you don't feed the cucumber and you don't water it regularly, it's not going to give you any cucumbers, right? Or the cucumbers it does give, it's going to be bitter. Right. Same with the chicken. If it's not allowed to scratch and be in the sunshine and get all the bugs and all the different stuff that it needs to be happy, the meat and the eggs are not going to be healthy for you. Right. So I have I have a huge, uh, huge ethics on how the animals and the plants are kept that I eat. Because they store that. Um, oh, yeah, I believe that, that. misery. Yeah. The misery, the feedlots, I will not touch that meat. I will not touch it. Farm-raised fish, will not touch them. Um, they're the misery of an animal not being able to be put into its rightful place and live its rightful life so that it's strong and healthy and happy is probably the most detrimental thing we do to ourselves. 
-hmm. It's not just about getting volumes of food. It's about getting the right nutritional kind of food that's happy and healthy and that had a great life. That's why the American Indians, when they used to kill a, a bison or a buffalo or whatever, um, it was a sacred thing. And they used every piece of the animal uh, for a reason, because they were thankful and they were grateful. And they know that the buffalo gave his life to sustain their village. That is the reverence of which I eat plants and meat or, or whatever I ex uh, consume. And I'm really starting to understand that processed food is not is not good for us now we all know that intellectually but maybe we don't really know it like in our cells the more i learn uh the more i cannot even eat any of that stuff anymore i can't do it it's hard it's uh, uh, you know it's one of those things where you have to kind of weigh out and and believe me i i have a food addiction i've dealt with it my whole life it's part of my part of my trauma package that came complete with me <laughs> and <laughs> so food is you know something for me that is um uh a love hate relationship you know and so for me i know what i should and shouldn't have and I, i'm a i'm a pescatarian i don't eat meat but i will eat uh wild caught fishes um but primarily i stick to a vegetarian style diet mm -hmm. uh, but on occasion i cave you know it i'm human we're all human and everything brings uh, everyone has something different that brings them comfort Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, food is a comfort for me sometimes. Um, and, uh, we struggle with that and it's in our face constantly. Mm -hmm. So while you're going through this holiday season with all the craziness and, you know, working like mad and make sure you're putting some good whole food into nutrition, your body. <laughs> yes. give yourself some nutrition do not exist on caffeine and, and, you know, energy drinks and candy and uh, fast food. Uh, you're doing yourself and the animals and the people that you work with a disservice because then you are going to be even more run down. You need to, this is, if, if at any time, this is a time for premium fuel. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're under stress and you're yeah. going all, yeah. And not to lose the thread of this. And I just wanted to mention this before we move on. I, we only got about four more minutes, I guess. Um, people have been observed uh, or have been observing other animals who they consider vegetarian, complete vegetarians eating meat. Right. Elephants have been observed scooping up a chicken and eating it because they need the phosphorus from the bones. Bones, yeah. So even vegetarian animals will occasionally eat a small animal. Um, you know, squirrels will eat mice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's a, a na natural thing. Um, I have and, bone broth on occasion. Yeah. I so, will. so there is something to that. I mean, there is no animal, probably the koala is the only one that has like one leaf and it could, has to be in the tree because if you cut it off the tree, it doesn't recognize it and it, that's all it eats and then it dies. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, th it's very rare to find an animal who doesn't have that uh, spectrum. Yeah spectrum of nutrition but yeah like uh, melissa was just saying um we are in uh not only an area of excess food and stuff and technology and whatever whatever um Instant gratification nation yes so now would be a good time to maybe when you go to that big old buffet or banquet or family gathering or whatever and they've got 18 different pies and whatever you know, uh, maybe it's time to step back a little and say, wow, do we need this? Do I need this? Right. Maybe we need the celebration, but do I need a taste of all 18 pies and everything else? You know what I mean? It's delicious. Take a little bit home with you in a little Tupperware and eat it over a few days instead of gorging yourself. Uh, that's my issue all the time. You know, I'm speaking from experience. No, don't yeah, ever well, think that I'm lecturing you. you. Me and Melissa both are like... <laughs> When you hit the lounge, the, the Barca lounger, and you have to undo your pants or even worse, take your pants off. Yeah. Oh, my pants with elastic now. So yes. <laughs> well, there you go. I happen to be wearing unicorn elastic pants. So my perfect, pants have, perfect. Have have unicorns dancing on them and they are elastic. So 
they're cozy. I'm, I love all things fun and fashion, and um, but I am coming into the cozy part of my life. Like I Girl. enjoy not having to have that bra with the wires in it on twenty four mm-hmm. seven and jeans and. I hate you know, to say it, but my husband going blind was one of the one of the best <laughs> things that ever happened to me. <laughs> walk around here and all kinds of whatever my hair is all whatever he just loves me okay yeah i don't know why i've just been blessed with this man that loves me and uh but it, it made me less stressed over appearance i guess yeah well if you will. now yeah. i can just be calm and it just has been a that part has been a blessing it's not all a blessing but that tiny part of it that yes. tiny part. <laughs> well i have to agree that you know my husband is is uh blind to all the flaws that I see Aww. when I look in the mirror. He loves so, you. Yes, <laughs> he does. God knows why. Right. <laughs> I, I am the same literally at my worst with him. Like I will do things and say things and then be like, oh, I have no idea who that was. You know, She just came out and said those horrible things. Well, that's part of menopause too. Yeah. <laughs> that literally is a part of menopause. Hormonally, you just snap. Yeah. Like, I'll be like, oh my God, where did that even come from? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Right now I'm know. sitting in a bucket of sweat. Oh, I, I was like perfect. that last I was like that yesterday. I was there's the pillow, the blankets on the recliner. I had a big thick sweatshirt on. I was all bundled up watching old movies. And then I'm like, Jesus, it's hot in here. And then every <laughs> article of clothing has to come off. Not even underwear could touch you. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, he's all, what's the matter? I'm like, it's so hot in here. I turned the AC to 70 and had fans in here. And he was just like, he's like, anything I can do for you? <laughs> you know, like, he's backing away slowly. Like. As he should, as he should to stay safe. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. adorable. Take care of yourself and allow yourself to have those moments because it happens mm. to all of us. Absolutely. We're all dealing with that. We're all just trying to find our way. And we want that community. We want that camaraderie. We want somebody else to say, oh, yes, I'm a crazy person, too. You know? To That's back. why we're friends. Yeah. <gasps> Cry for no reason. That's why we're friends. Yeah. I, I I often think that I could be one of those mourners that they used to pay people in the Roman days to go to funerals and cry, even though you didn't know the person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I look at my husband and he'll go, are you crying? And I'll, I don't know why. I just feel like Truthfully, I'm crying yeah. right now. Truthfully. I, I dropped him. the last chocolate album and I can't eat now. It's on the floor. <laughs> yeah, and I just let myself have it. Just yeah. do it and just... Let yourself have that for some reason, whatever reason, your your energy needs to release that. It's like gas. Yeah. Better out than in. And yep. That's so how I, I feel about it. All right. We are at our hour. Already. This is just, I know, it goes so fast. We could literally talk for talk hours with people and we have want. no clue. <laughs> <laughs> but well, this was nice to just was, clear the air and say was. whatever we want. Yeah. I mean, we can always say whatever we want, That's but fair. today we really didn't have a topic because it's just the beginning of the, the holiday season and the beginning of November and everybody's going to start being really frenetic. And we just wanted to be, have a relaxed little conversation about, yeah. about giving, uh, counting our blessings. Yeah. And giving yourself a little room to be and easy. Yeah. Take, take it easy on yourself. Yeah. Quit being so uh, quit making such a burden for yourself to carry, you know, the people that love you that you're actually buying gifts for, um, they don't mind. Right. They they want you to take care of yourself. So, so do that too. Do that first. Just like you reach for the oxygen mask and put on yourself first. Do that this holiday season, make sure you're eating correctly, getting plenty of rest, getting plenty of water, um, and not eating too badly. Uh, um, overall, if you have a, uh, Thanksgiving celebration or Christmas celebration or whatever, that's when to indulge, but not all for the next two months, every day, every day, every day. You know, yeah. just take the time for yourself. Go into a quiet corner and breathe. Ten, <laughs> ten 
tend to your fire. No one can light their torches if your fire is out. That's you right. Know, if your, if your tribe, yeah, if your tribe, can you tell them back to watching Survivor? If your tribe is, you know, is rallying around you and you are, uh, you know, the, the person that your family or your friends come to, you need to make sure that you're tending your fire because they light their they light their torches to find their way from you know from, from your you. fire <laughs> from you so that's a great great quote that really is thanks i just made that up <laughs> I love it. You write that down you trademark that <laughs> that's right. let me put that in my new journal <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So we love you all. Yes. We, we love, love you, all. you all. Even the ones that are not finding their way, even the ones that may not like us, we wish you the best. best. We wish you the happiest right. holiday. We wish you success and prosperity. Uh, and may your next sip be just as delicious and lovely and nurturing as your last. Absolutely. Thank you all. So, so Melissa. You going to play us out, Michelle? Our little I will. I'm trying Michelle. to find the thing. I'm just not. Oh, um, <laughs> Not together today. <laughs> there you go. A little outro. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you in a week for the rest of the recordings for this month. And then yep, we will have another good. live at the beginning of December. Um, if you have any topics that you want us to cover or talk about yes. uh, or ruin for you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we would be happy to do that. Just give us a message and we will get your topic on the schedule. We love you all. Thank you. And have Thank a you. lovely holiday season. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>